Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to my channel on this um, beautiful January 15, 2020. It's 3.22 p.m. And um, in today's video, we are going to explore the Book of Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar's statue dream that um, represented not only the present but the future. And we're going to determine where we are within timeline because a lot of us seem to think that we have a lot of time left when in reality we don't we're actually living on borrowed times to be honest and while the churches are preaching prosperity and the beast religion is going around trying to unify everyone and be in worship on the wrong day and opposing the word of our Heavenly Father in different levels. Not just that, but she and her demise has already been written in the book of Revelations. And it points out exactly who she is. And it gives us a more or less timeline on where we are in the game. Because Satan has waged a war against our Heavenly Father. And he also is waging a war against us. And the ultimate goal is the souls of men. There's nothing else at stake. And our Heavenly Father is tired. And we are soon going to be seeing the wrath of our Heavenly Father. But around the same time, the lawless man is going to rise up and seem to have all the answers to all the questions. And he's going to gain the attention of the world leaders up to the point that they're going to give up their power to this person, to this entity, to this individual. And we don't want to think about it. We don't want to think how close we are to the end. Well, by the end of this video, you will know what position we are. And Matthew 24, as I stated yesterday, is playing out along with Daniel's. Right there. It's playing all itself. And only those that have ears and eyes to see will understand. Many won't. It took me a long time to understand the book of Daniel's. Because at the beginning... It was, the book of Daniel is a very, it speaks about monsters that we can't even process in our minds. But this is the depiction of the principality behind these characters. Because these are all principalities that we are up against. Remember, Ephesians 6, 12, our fight is not against flesh and blood, it's against principalities, against wickedness in dark places. So we're dealing with very evil and wicked demonic people. Some of them know that they serve Satan. This is what the goats are. They follow their master. So, I want to take some time. I will be putting everything under the description box. King Nebuchadnezzar 
had a dream and the dream was interpreted by Daniel and he dreamt of a statue and the statue was the head of gold the arms and the chest of silver the belly and thighs of brass the legs of iron and the feet were mixed of iron and clay well we can see that the head as Daniel was interpreting the dream and he told Nebuchadnezzar that the head was the empire of Babylon which none can compare to but that that empire would fall and not only was he being shown the present but he was also shown the future okay so the head we know by the interpretation of Daniels that is speaking about the Babylonian kingdom or empire the arms and the chest is the silver which is Medo Persia um, Empire Medo and Persia Empire then the belly and the thighs which is brass is the Gracian Empire then the legs of iron is the Roman Empire that was never conquered it was divided and it has been divided ever since and the feet which are a mix of iron and clay is the kingdom that we are living in now is a divided kingdom where sooner or later is going to crumble because iron doesn't mix with clay iron being the power that is left of the roman empire still standing and the clay are the people including the scattered 12 tribes of Israel and a mixing of people the Catholic Church is the iron she is the Roman Empire the papacy is the Roman Empire still clinging to our feet and you know toes and they are trying to mix themselves with us but as iron does not mix with clay it will not stand the rock that Nebuchadnezzar sees coming down was the rock of our Heavenly Father sent to earth which is Jahushua and established the earth which is the kingdom of our Heavenly Father on earth which will be a kingdom that no man can come against there's nothing that can come against this kingdom this kingdom is the one that our Heavenly Father left to prepare for us those that maintain the faith those that believe without sin and accept the word of our Heavenly Father. We can see that Daniel 2 speaks about the statue, but Daniel 7 speaks about animals. So we can put this together because they all the same, different descriptions. But we're dealing with the same evil and the same empires. So we got the gold, which is Babylon, which is in turns in Daniel 7, the lion. 
We got silver, which is Medo and Persia, which is the bear, okay? We got the brass, which is Greece. They are the leopard. And then we got iron, which is Rome, and it's the fierce beast, which is the um, Roman Empire. The beast with the um, different heads, with the crown on their head. And the iron and the clay is the divided kingdom that we live in, okay? And the 1,260 years um, where the ten horns and the little horn is going to rule and take over before the rock, which is the judgment that puts an end to the kingdom of darkness. And establishes the millennium, which is the reign of our Heavenly Father's Son, Jehoshua. At that time, the kingdom had been, is going to be given to the saints. Then, we got Daniel 8, which again is the same exact thing. It's telling us the same, the same exact thing, but now we can connect them together and get a better picture so we got babylon which is the gold which is the lion which in daniel 8 comes as none because that entire empire and kingdom has been basically wiped out up to the point that they don't exist then we got the Medo and the persia which is the silver which is a bear which is um, the ram with the two horns. Then we got Greece, which is brass, which is the leper, and he is represented by the he goat. And then we got Rome, which is the iron, the fierce beast, and he is represented by the little horn from the four horns. All right. Um, there's a note that I made here. We learn that the bees with ten horns and the little horn that plucks out three kingdoms as it rises, giving power to the sixth king in its appointed time. So, we already know that there are three bloodlines that have been completely exterminated and they no longer exist. Um, that constitute as three kingdoms. Um, the papacy is the kingdom of the iron and clay. And there are the strength of the iron because they hoard all the wealth of the whole entire world. Not only that, they hoard the knowledge of the whole entire world, not allowing other people to open their eyes and seek the path that they want. For themselves as our free will allow us to instead they decide to sequester the knowledge which is what the Vatican's library is all about in the location of the city of Rome in the state or whatever they want to call it Italy so it's still Rome is still part of Rome. That is the power that still exists and has lived until now. And it's trying to mix itself with us. So, we see that the iron and the clay is a division. And we see that the Roman Empire, which were the legs, okay, was never conquered but in turn it was divided and that brings us to the feet where we are right now this is the kingdom that we live in we live in a materialism kingdom that these people have made to sequester our minds and to get us to die oblivious to what is going on and the true nature of the intention of each and every one of us, the purpose that we serve. 
and church didn't start out like that. And I already stressed that. The church of today is not how church started. We see that the kings of the north and south are being trying to be revived by the fear of beast which is what is left of the iron which is Rome and working through the little horn from where the four horns come from we see the divided kingdom which is the iron and the clay and the 1260 years the little horn it's being waxed up the little horn is your antichrist your false prophet is already here. He's been here. He is your Pope. Your so-called Pope. Above him is the Black Pope. He's the one that calls the shots. He's the one that quote-unquote is trying to usher in the Antichrist. They all hiding under that fictitious religion that goes and opposes itself against our Heavenly Father and anything and everything that stands for good or godly. We see that the something is going to happen where there's going to be like... um. A Muslim leader that's going to stand up. That's going to be like the chosen of Muhammad. But then again, aren't the Jews expecting a Messiah also? So everybody is expecting a Messiah. And so are the real Bible believing Christians. But the difference is that these people are expecting a man. Our Messiah for those that follow the Bible and the teachings of Yahushua, we already know our Messiah came and it was killed. He was murdered under the Roman Empire. So, who are these people expecting? On a serious note. The Catholic Church holds the knowledge of the truth and they will sell the Antichrist as the Messiah of the goats. And all who side with these people and commit abominations in the eye of Yah will accept and embrace this man. And everybody is going to follow the beast system. Now I'm going to read some interesting facts. And um, I'm going to go into the statue and I'm going to read what? Some more information. In 1798, the papacy, which is the Catholic Church, received a wound. Now the wound is almost healed. Napoleon General Berthier took the Pope captives in 1798 showing their vulnerability and weakness, effectively ending their 1,260-year reign. But the Bible states that this wound will be healed, and she will stand up again and rule as she did in the past, before her wound was inflicted back in 1798. From 1798 till now, it's been 222 years. Um... The papacy has set out to deceive people and to unite people under her rule, appearing innocent while hiding the truth from everyone. She is your Antichrist church with a leader that claims to be given power by Yah, when in reality her power and her wealth comes from all the robberies it has committed and the blood shed the blood that she has shed through her through all her um Antichrist spirit reign. Iron and clay don't miss. So she will reign a war against those who will not follow her. 
The Church and, Pro and the Protestant movement stands for the papacy and follows them. They are embedded in a worldwide deception that we just can't imagine. Those who refuse to learn from the past are bound to repeat its mistake again. We see that with the church, the religion movement, and the beast church leading all blindly astray and away from the love of Yahushua, bringing forth the wrath of Yah and the war with the beast. The papacy receives all the worship by multitude of people and we know the papacy is a religious power this is the false prophet who will usher the man who will be reviled as the antichrist a leader both religious and military in power this man will lead the kings of the earth in destruct in a destruction path with its end in the war of amagito which is the war with gog and magog um the final war against good and evil and not forget world war three which will be a religious war between religious parties and that's not going to end very good so this will be a war against good and evil and the story is a victorious one for Yah and his kingdom prevail and it's been written so we already know. The papacy is a nation in Rome in Italy. One billion followers. They have one billion followers. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people being deceived. So can you imagine the power? when she's fully restored to her glory that's just now she's nobody now she's trying to get the affection and the trust of the those around her because everybody knows her history but that's a lot of people being deceived so can you imagine the multitude and multitude and multitude of people that are going to follow her when she gets up and exercises all her power as she did back in the time before um, 1798, before she became captured. I don't want to remember. I don't even want to think about it. Because the Catholic Church has been known to shed more blood than any war ever waged in men. She has more blood in her hands than any, any war that we've ever waged. So can you imagine? Well, it's well known that the Church of Rome has shed more innocent blood than any other institution that has ever existed among mankind. No wonder they divided, not conquer. Who can be her power? Will um will be by no Protestant who has a competent knowledge of history. This is so sad. It's repeating itself once again because even those that have full knowledge, they won't stand against her. And this has been prophesied. It's in the Bible that many are going to follow after this beast. There are many people that are going to abandon our Heavenly Father and follow after this madness. Fifty million lives were destroyed by the papacy during the Dark Ages over matters of religion. To his credit, Pope John Paul admitted to and apologized for this mass murder. But even sorry cannot undo this horrible atrocity. In the words of John Wesley, founder of the Methodist Church, boldly stated, referring to the papacy, he, the papacy, is in an emphatical sense the man of sin, and he increases all manner of sin above measure, 
and he is too properly styled the son of perdition as he has caused the death of numberless multitudes both of his opposers and followers he is it that exalts himself above all that is called god or that is worshipped claiming the highest power and highest honor claiming the prerogative which belongs to god alone another clue we can see with the papacy is that they have a man as its leader like a president has a vice president alluring to the papacy um being more than what it presents itself to be hiding in plain sight roger williams the founder of the first baptist church in america says this about the boat the pretended vicar of christ on earth who sits as God over the temple of God, exalting himself not only above all that is called God, but over the souls and conscience of all his vessels. Yeah, over the spirits of Jehoshua Christ, over the Holy Spirit, yeah, and God himself. Speaking, yeah, over the Spirit of Christ, over the Holy Spirit, um, and God himself. Speaking against God of heaven, thinking to change times and laws, but he is the son of perdition. The title of the Pope is Vicarious Philideli, which means when translated, um, um, it's number equals to 666, which is the number of the Antichrist. And the Bible in Revelation clearly tells us that the Antichrist is a man. So, this is the false prophet. This is the man that not only is going to usher in the Antichrist, but the Antichrist is going to come at a time of complete chaos and destruction where hope has been lost he's going to get up and proclaim to know all the answers to the world's problems and is going to deceive many into thinking that he is the messiah and that's the great deception that is not only upon us but that we are seeing manifesting. Every day, something is implemented. The RFID chip will be a means for the Antichrist to control the money currency of the world and to control those that follow him. Obviously, we that believe in the scripture and believe in the promises of the Bible are not going to get no chip and we definitely are not going to worship this man and that's where the test of faith is going to come for each and every one of us when we are presented with either worship the beast or death we should not fear death because Yahushua overcame it bottom line the stage is set and from now on things will escalate as we go about our daily lives evil has waged war upon and up to the point that a great deception is on its way and shortly approaching if we do not solidify our foundation you will fall prey to this great deception and this um, picture right here not only does this confirm what I just said but it also confirms that we are the feet and the ten toes let's start from the beginning head of gold Daniel 2.32 represents Babylon 605 to 539 BC 
Thou art this head of gold. Daniel 2, 38. King Nebuchadnezzar was Babylon's personified. Gold was a, a fitting symbol of Babylon. This, the, excuse me, the historian Hordo II described the golden image of Marduk seated upon a golden throne before a golden table and a golden altar. Pliny described robes of the priests interlands with gold. Neo-Babylon was a golden kingdom from 605 BC to 539 BC. Then comes the breast and arms of silver. Daniel 2.32 represents Mida and Persia from 539 to 331 BC. The kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Daniel 5.28 Archaeologists have pinpointed October 29, 539 BC as the date that Babylon fell to Medo-Persia. The kingdom of Medo-Persia was a dull kingdom, but Cyrus of Persia welded the elements of the two kingdoms together. The two arms of the image were thus a fitting symbol of the power Medo-Persia was represented by. Silver, just as silver was used for personal adornment by Persians, warriors and was also the metal of their monetary system then we move down to the belly and the thighs of brass daniel 232 represents greece 331 to 168 bc and another um third kingdom of brass which shall bear rule over all the earth daniel 239 Medo Persia was succeeded by Greece, the kingdom of brass or bronze. See also Daniel 8 20 through 21. This was the Macedonian or Hellenistic Empire of Alexander the Great and his successors. Alexander defeated Persia at the Battle of Garnicus 334 BC. Isus 333 BC and Abrella 331 BC. The Jewish historians Josephus understood Daniel 2 to mean that the Medo Persian Empire will be destroyed by another king from the west clad in bronze. Bronze was used in Hellenistic body armor, battle axe, and spear tip. So, legs of iron, Daniel 2.33, represents Rome, 168 BC to 476 AD. The fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in, in pieces and subdues all things, Daniel 2.40. Upon Alexander's death, his generals divided the empire amongst themselves. This divided empire then fell prey to the Romans, since the founding of Rome is about 753 BC. She had emerged as a world conqueror. Rome defeated the Greeks at the Battle of Pydna in 168 BC and arose the fourth kingdom as strong as iron. The great iron monarchy of Rome did not last for Ever, barbarians' tribe began incursion upon the Roman Empire in 351 AD. The last Roman Empire, Romulus Augustulus, was dethroned in 476 AD. The historian Gibbon said this about Rome. Rome sometimes ban banquished in battle, always victorious in war, advanced with rapid steps, and the image of gold, of silver, or brass that might serve to represent the nations and their kings were successively broken by the iron monarchy, which was Rome. So now we up to the bottom, which are the feet with the ten toes. Feet 
and ten toes of iron and clay. Daniel 2.33 represents the divided kingdom, 476 A.D. until the end of time. The kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as those swallows the iron mixed with murray clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly weakened or broken. Daniel 2, 40-42 After the collapse of Rome in 476 AD, the empire was divided into ten divisions. These were the Antrogoth, Besigoth, Franks, Vandals, Suvi, Alamanni, Anglo-Saxons, Heruli, Lombardi, and Burgundians. On modern day today, these will be translated to France, England, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Portugal, Spain, and the fruit of those ten divisions. So, it goes on to say, because the statue was a representation of the future, we have progressed through all the kingdoms of the statue and are now living in the time of the ten toes. The last kingdom to ever wield power on earth. Some say we are living in the time of the big toe of that statue and that era is about to be extinguished. Certainly, the signs of Christ's second coming that are mentioned in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and the entire book of Revelation are happening all around us. This statue prophecy shows us that God's intervention into human affairs is coming soon. According to the prophecy timeline, we are awaiting for the great event in the history of humankind, the overthrow of earthly powers, and the formation of a kingdom that will never be destroyed watch therefore for ye know not what hour your lord doth come matthew 24 42 and with this we conclude that not only are we are living in the last kingdom but this confirms what i just say and the rock that is going to come and it's going to be cast down to the feet, breaking it and shattering it. Like Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. And the same thing that he saw his own demise. And how our Heavenly Father punished him. But preserve his kingdom. Those things have come to pass. So if those things have come to pass, we have to establish that we are living in the last kingdom. And we are that generation. And I testify to that with a 99.9% .9 certainty. Because we can never be sure for sure until we see the things happening. But it's no coincidence that the book of Enoch has come out more into the light as technology has increased. Knowledge has increased. And we've seen that we are awaiting the third war. And these people are fanatic in issuing civil wars. We've seen how they did it with the land of Egypt and how they used Cleopatra and how foolish she was as a queen. But we've seen how Rome itself turned against its own because it was its own that killed Caesar. So, and Mark Anthony was killed by his own. Again, a war amongst people. Expect that to come back. Once you understand that, then you will understand what you need to do and what needs to be done. Until this point, my presentation is concluded. And I hope that you can understand how close we are. I will be posting links under the description box as to the different statues and the connection between Daniel 2, Daniel 7, and Daniel 8. 
okay and i would recommend that you go over the book of daniels i will also be posting um the movie of daniel speaking about the three kings that is available in my channel i'll be posting that under the description box and um before you guys go let's check out what i've been missing since my phone's been ringing from left to right so i missed three earthquakes so we got uh 3.48 at 3.12, then we got a 3.86 at 3.49, and then we got another one which was a 3.76 at 4 p.m. So it's just two minutes away because it's 4.02 right now. Um, as you can see, we've been getting earthquakes left to right and this morning we had a really big one at 11 36 a.m it was a 5.2 and i felt the shake um so did my son so these are all labor pains my friends and we must not fear nor should we be afraid of death or what we may encounter our main purpose is to give our life to jahushua and know where we belong and with who we belong to Accept him, give your life to him, put your life in his hands, and fear not. Our redemption is very, 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 very close. It's closer than a lot of us think. On my next video, I will be talking about the materialism kingdom that we live under and how that ties down with this along with an old movie that came out a long time ago that not many people really paid attention to because that movie tells you exactly where we are until next time everyone thank you for joining me i hope that we all learned something because i sure did take care my friends be safe and y'all bless your path into the truth always and um be on alert i will see you all soon my friends